So, mixed streets. And I certainly became interested in mixed streets when I was asked to do a piece of research for Design for London uh, a few years ago now, looking at London's local high streets. Um, and at the time, Design for London were very interested in examining local high streets and, and understanding the regeneration potential of those pit parts of our urban fabric. Wind forward a few years, today our media, uh, we're ever reading in the newspapers stories about the decline of the high street and, and the pressures that our high streets uh, are under. Um, and things do all seem perhaps doom and gloom. But certainly our research found that in fact that is not necessarily the case. And there is huge untapped potential in these complex mixed streets which are so much part of our urban fabric. And so the issue of urban design uh, that recently come, came out aimed to explore that both in this country and internationally. And there's a series of articles in there which do that. And so today we've got uh, two speakers who've um, both contributed pieces to that, um, uh, edi uh, that, that edition of urban design. I will also talk about a piece of research which is mentioned but not really developed. And then Peter uh, will talk about his work and his reflections on uh, this, this broad issue of mixed streets at the end. So let's move straight on to the first, then, of these presentations. And as I say, this focuses on a, a piece of research which uh, I did for Design for London uh, a few years ago now. And we think about... London's high streets, then very much they capture uh, much of London's excitement and, 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 and dynamism. They're incredible pieces uh, of infrastructure, of a distinctive element of the city, uh, which Londoners uh, generally value uh, and which uh, visitors to the city value. Um, their health or otherwise is very much a reflection of the health or otherwise of the city as a whole and its parts, but they are the responsibility um, of many and largely ignored by all. Uh, they're problematic pieces of infrastructure because of their sheer complexity. And as I said, many might seem today to be uh, in crisis. So while some of our high streets are, are clearly thriving, particularly those in parts of very central London. Others are suffering to a much greater degree. And this piece of research really looked at the local high streets outside of the uh, core of central London. My local high street, for example, and the top image there is these days just a string of betting shops um, and takeaways, uh, which, of course, have a function, a local function. But it used to be much more than that. So you could say many of our high streets are, 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 in, are in crisis. So this piece of research which we at UCL did with the uh, architecture, com uh, architecture uh, firm Gort Scott aimed to develop a better understanding and insight into the functioning of high streets uh, and thereby to try and understand what is the role of high streets, local high streets, in supporting sustainable patterns, more sustainable patterns of growth in London. And the piece of research largely uh, focused around a series of GIS mapping exercises and local case studies with a lot of draw, uh, local drawn work to try and understand how these pieces of infrastructure work. Where are London's high streets? Well, if you look at the London plan, then you'll see a series of blobs on the map, little dots, little blobs, um, which show the way that most of our planners see high streets, in other words, in the form of a hierarchy. Um, and these are dotted across London. But in reality, they're not blobs on the ground, they're streets. And if you look at the A to Z, then there are 113 named stretches of high street 
or high road in London, uh, and, but in fact that is only uh, the tip of the iceberg because if you take 250 metre stretches of retail, which we did in our research as the, what you might mean by a local high street, uh, then there are 702 lengths of uh, 250 metre retail or, or longer than 250 metres across London uh, and in fact the average length of those is 700 uh, metres. And 500 kilometres in total of this type of mixed local high street outside the central core uh, of London. And much of this is absolutely invisible in policy. Even in local plans, much of this is invisible. 77% is not designated uh, in any way as a, a local high street or, or part of the standard retail hierarchy. The result for many is streets which are often polluted, which are certainly often neglected, uh, which are dominated by traffic, um, high levels of nitrogen oxide and particulates. Um, often our public services are moving off our high streets and retail stress, and we hear a lot about retail cloning. And yet the emphasis in public policy over the last 10 years or so has been on large, relatively easy to compile and develop brownfield sites and not on these complex <coughs> places, <coughs> not on these com complex pieces, <coughs> excuse me, complex pieces of our city. And it is perhaps because of their complexity that they're often ignored. They're complex pieces of physical fabric. They're also complex spaces for movement, traffic as well as pedestrians and public transport as well. They're complex pieces of real estate, in multiple ownerships. Um, and they're complex spaces of exchange, economic exchange and social exchange as well. Many have a very long history uh, dating back to the original evolution of London, the Roman roads and so forth, and these have developed out, these arterial routes have developed out of the city, and today those form uh, these mixed streets, uh, mixed local high streets. But if you start doing the analysis, if you start trying to dig into them and understand them, they're much more than retail. Uh, our analysis showed that uh, there's a, a proportion of two to two to one retail office and industrial uses on these streets. So they really are mixed. And then there's residential on top of that. So retail is actually only a minority use, even in streets which are very much associated with retail. That's maybe their defining characteristic, but only part of uh, the of the issue. And what you see is a thin crust of retail and a sort of invisible hinterland that stretches back from that with this mix, this complex mix of uses uh, and activities which is constantly changing over time. Of a whole variety of different types of uses, shopping, governmental, education, employment, leisure, and complex physical forms which vary across our high streets, our local high streets. They're sites of rapid change. The retail is the most obvious element of that, but all the other uses are, are constantly churning and changing as well, and therefore arguably a future potential too. These local high streets, these stretches, these 250 metre stretches, are where 1.5 million Londoners work, which is more employment than the central activities zone. And twi almost twice as many businesses, often quite small businesses, are located in these complex streets. Often small busi businesses employing relatively few people, quite indep uh, in often independent, often quite innovative and arguably competitive businesses are uh, occupying space which is relatively cheap and can be reused for different functions. 
sites of great character, familiarity, and different types of social and economic exchange. When we asked people why they visited the local high streets, only about a third said they were there for shopping. And a whole series of other functions uh, are there, whether it's work, visiting friends, leisure, or simply passing through. They're generally a pretty sustainable movement framework. Again, when you ask the people on these local high streets how they got there, um, then only about 20% of those came by car or uh, other forms of motor. Uh, most walked or came by bus. And sites of incredible potential. When you map these bits of local complex streets against the availability of brownfield land in London, then uh, half of London's brownfield sites are within a 2.5 metre walk. That's 200 metres within a block's depth of uh, these uh, streets. So you might argue that's perhaps where the real potential of London lies, rather than the big individual brownfield sites. It's these small sites which so closely map to many of our high streets. And this doesn't really show up, this slide, but it shows uh, the two together. And they are existing sunk investments. We made these investments a long time ago, and they're ripe for us to exploit now, if we so wish uh, to do. And of course all Londoners, or the vast majority of Londoners, have a stake. Two-thirds of Londoners live within a five-minute walk of a local high street. That's five million people. So, they're not blobs, they're lines on the map. Um, they account for just 3.6% of the street network, um, but represent some of the most vibrant, diverse, uh, and potentially sustainable spaces of the city with huge potential growth, uh, growth potential and sites of huge local significance. So the argument that followed from our work was that perhaps we should be prioritising investment and development along this network of streets, along this sunk investment, rather than focusing on uh, the larger individual brownfield sites. 22% of London is within, a 200 me within 200 metres of a high street, but they often languish in the too difficult to handle category, uh, or simply we favour large, easy to develop sites instead. So, it's time that London's high streets are given the attention they deserve, and of course it's not just London. London was the focus of our research, but the issue of urban design shows that in fact these are issues across the world, not just across this country or this city. That this is a common typology and the potential is there really in big cities around the world to much better exploit our existing complex uh, and uh, infinitely varied and interesting uh, mixed local streets. <laughs>